Tell you that Ryan Wilson's a hard worker. Gets us a brand new first round mock each and every Monday here on HQ Spotlight. Here's his latest. It's a little bit different than the last couple we've seen because he has the Raiders trading up to number one to take Cam Ward. He did have Travis Hunter going number one to the Jags uh, for a couple straight weeks. He has the Giants going with Shooter Sanders at number two and Hunter falling to number four and the New England Patriots with Ashton Genty jumping into the top ten as I'm going tenth to the Bengals. We have Ryan Wilson joining us along with Mike Renner and let's start at the very top. Um, Ryan just talking to you over the last few weeks. He's made it pretty clear that he thinks Cam Ward is his, is the top quarterback prospect in this class and I'll let you speak on that in a second and why you have the Raiders moving up to get him but I'd like your take Mike what what do you think this would be like in this marriage with the hypothetical marriage with the silver and black here I think it would be great and I do think Cam Ward is the best quarterback in this draft mm -hmm. class and well worth trading up for if they aren't in position to have him at the number one or number two overall picks and want to get in that position I think he's worth moving up for because he has real deal high-end NFL arm talent and that's what it is the fact that this guy can sling it to every single level of the football field and you've seen him improve by leaps and bounds all throughout his career whether it's at Incarnate Word to Wazoo to now Miami he's met every single challenge in improved so with the kind of bevy of receivers they have there, they're missing the deep threat in that offense, and they're going to add it, but they have all these underneath intermediate weapons in that Raiders offense. I think he'd fit right in with guys like Brock Bowers and Michael Mayer. Yeah, and the interesting thing is uh, Tom Telesco, the GM of the Raiders, is not one to trade up. And uh, Rick Spielman, my buddy, brings it up frequently. But this is a situation where you need to have a plan that doesn't involve Gardner Minshew coming back. He's obviously out for the year. Desmond Ritter's going to get a chance to play again. But you need a quarterback. You need one desperately. You picked 13th last year, so you missed out on those top six quarterbacks. You end up with Brock Bowers, which is a great consolation prize. And the other thing to consider, and this is something, Mike, you've talked about in recent weeks, if the Jaguars have the number one overall pick, which they currently do, it might be in their best interest to trade down if there's a trade partner. I think Travis Hunter is the best player in this class because the the dual threat ability and the way he's playing at both those positions. Uh, but our colleague and buddy Pete Prisco is adamant that the Jaguars need big guys. So I allow them to trade down, target on a big guy, and let the Raiders get uh, the quarterback they like. And then the other, other remaining quarterback in the first round uh, can go to whoever's left looking for a QB. Yeah, and that would be uh, Shooter Sanders going to the Giants number two overall. I think this is back-to-back -back weeks that you have uh, those, those two entities hooking up there, Sanders and the Giants. Is there any concern that the Giants might be a place that uh, that maybe they wouldn't want to go, though? Uh, I'm smirking because, as you know, uh, Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, Sanders' father has made it clear that he's going to have some say where his son ends up. He'll he'll do it behind the scenes, according to Dion, and, and not make it a, a public conversation. But certainly he, he has some issues about the right fit. Now, I think the Giants obviously have a track record of, of being the right fit. Eli Manning... Uh, arrived in New York under similar circumstances, perhaps that Shador might. Uh, Cleveland Browns feel like a bad fit if you just look historically at how those organizations have been run. So that that's going to have to be a, a conversation that they're going to have. One other thing I want to point out, by the way, this mock draft is loosely based on the the podcast mock draft we did last week, me and Rick. So that explains the other quarterback that goes QB three, just so there's no concerns about me actually pulling the trigger on a third quarterback. But I like the idea of Shador. Uh, to New York, assuming Brian Dayball can summon the Josh Allen energy he had when they were in Buffalo together. While I don't disagree with Shador Sanders going here, if I'm the New York Giants, I'm hoping for Cam Ward. I, I just think his tools fit better with this offense right now, and Brian Dayball and his ability to play on the move will be perfect for this offense. And Malik Neighbors, uh, Darius Slayton, guys who can really fly on the outside, give me that deep ball thrower. But again, Beggars can't be choosers. These are two guys that are top of the draft type of guys, and if they're there, you're taking one of them. Yeah, and maybe the only two guys, as you, as you guys have said throughout the, the last month or so, the only two quarterbacks that go in the first round, though uh, we have seen another sneak into the first round in, in late mocks from Ryan Wilson. We might get to that in a second, but I want to ask you about Travis Hunter because, Ryan, you had him going first overall the last few drafts. Why do you have him falling to the Patriots at four here? Uh, the needed quarterback and the Jaguars targeting offensive linemen pushed him down and 
fair or not, that just is the reality in this mock draft. And I think that's a, an absolute godsend to the New England Patriots who need help. Not so much at cornerback, but I love the idea of him playing alongside Christian Gonzalez. But in terms of skill position, guys who can ball out. Tyquan Thornton got cut recently, the former second-round pick who never worked out, the wide receiver under Baylor. And just special talent is what Travis Hunter does week in and week out. Now, I'm open to the conversation about the – Patriots needing to get an offensive tackle, and there's one still out there. If they wanted Will Campbell, I would understand that as well. But this just feels like too good an opportunity to pass up because he checks a box on offense that changes the way they will be able to play. And then you pair him with Christian Gonzalez, and that defense has played well at times this year. It gets even better in the secondary. Yeah, him to the Patriots is my favorite fit for him in the entire NFL. He can go one place, it's there, because to me, he could be a number one wide receiver in this offense. That's what they're desperately missing for Drake May. Yeah, they need O-line help, but it's not going to be the greatest draft for an offensive lineman. A guy like Travis Hunter could transform your passing attack, and they need moonlight on the other side of the football, I think. I think if he goes to New England, he's a wide receiver who plays cornerback situationally. Other places might see him as a corner, but he might see dollar signs at wide receiver and yeah. say, that's where I want to go. Interesting, because most people would say he's going to play more defense than offense, mm -hmm. but you think if it's in New England, it'd be the other way around. Yeah, they just need that number one wide receiver mm -hmm. desperately. And I think he has some meat on the bone there because you look at how skinny he is. It's because he has to play 180 snaps a game. <laughs> he could get stronger, and he's so good after the catch already as he is. If he gets any stronger, that is a number one type of wide receiver. Add NFL. more meat on the bone maybe in the NFL. <laughs> Let's move to uh, a real uh, eyebrow raise are here, Ryan. You hinted at it earlier. Another quarterback going in your first round mock at number 16, George's Carson Beck to the <laughs> L.A. Rams. What's this all about? Uh, I prefaced earlier the, the point we're talking about here, Chris, and that's because this is Rick Spielman's pick. Uh, so I'm going to blame Rick for this. But, you know, once every draft, there's there seems to be a guy that's a dark horse that perhaps gets overdrafted, almost usually at the, at the quarterback position. And Carson Beck, Rick loves Carson Beck, and he's so in love with him that he's not willing to quit him given some of the way the way he's played at points this year uh, two weeks ago he sort of bounced back and you want to see if he can sustain that over the course of whatever Georgia run Georgia's run ends up being you love the idea of fitting him in an offense like Sean McVay's where you're not putting everything on the quarterback I wouldn't take him in the first round uh, I also want to announce here I am not in the running for the, the Jets GM job just to get that out there as well <laughs> Ryan, do not let Rick bully you. Do not put him in the first round. He is not a first-round quarterback. He may not even come out in the draft with how he's performed this year. He has three different games with three interceptions this year. I'm raising my eyebrows if it's one game with three interceptions and you're a prospect slated to go in the first round. Three different ones? Yeah, Carson Beck ain't going in the first round. All right. Well, that was Rick's pick. You blame it on him. Ryan just uh, <laughs> <laughs> he just he can't let it go. He's got to give his partner some, some love. If you want more on that, and, and hear why Rick Spielman loves him so much. And check out their, their latest <laughs> podcast with the first pick. As we look at 11 through 20 here in Ryan's first round mock, uh, we're going to hit more on this in just a second with Ryan and Mike and some of the guys that Mike really likes that could be back end of the first round or so. We're coming right back on HQ Spotlight. Diving a little bit deeper into Ryan Wilson's latest mock draft as we look at the teens. Uh, you have Tyler Warren, the, the first tight end off the board on in Ryan's mock, going uh, to the Indianapolis Colts out of Penn State. We're going to hit on a, another tight end that goes a little bit later in his first round mock in just a second. But want to focus on, on some of the guys that Mike Renner wants to highlight and maybe some really good fits. And it starts right here with Malachi Starks going to the Seattle Seahawks. Why do you like this so much? To me, Mike McDonald's defense is based off of versatile pieces on the back end. And there's no more versatile piece in this draft than Malachi Starks, the safety out of Georgia. He can play slot. He can play deep. He could play corner, heck, if you wanted him to in a pinch. He's a fantastic tackler, only seven missed tackles on 123 attempts over the past two seasons. And if you just add them to that defense where they're already getting great results towards the second half of the season, year one with Mike McDonald, that's just another guy in the back end to be like their Kyle Hamilton, to be that Swiss Army knife weapon to change the game on that side of the football. So going to Seattle specifically, I love that fit. Now, will he fall to 20? I don't think so in real life. He's better than that. Hey, your guy Kyle Hamilton slipped a little bit, too. We'll see how that plays out. But I think you're exactly right. I love the idea of him with Devin Witherspoon back there. And you sort of touched on it, Mike. The last two weeks coming out of the bye, the Seahawks have been 
pretty good on defense, slow to start, but I think Mike McDonald has got those guys right where they want to be as they head down the stretch here. And a guy like Malachi Star uh, Starks joining them next year would, would certainly be special in that secondary. All right, let's jump to pick number 23 and one that you also like. Bo Nix getting a Big Ten tight end in Michigan's Colston Loveland. Yeah, you look at the Broncos and their receiving weapons, and you know they need to add, but then you look at this draft, and you look at the wide receiver class, you say, man, they may not be in a position to get one, but this is a little consolation prize for them, and Colson Loveland, who acts like a wide receiver, even if he's a tight end. He was the second leading receiver on that champion, national champion Michigan team a year ago, and this year, 582 yards. May not sound like a lot, but when you look at Michigan's passing offense, that's over a third of their passing yards this season, darn near 40%, because they've been so anemic through that. So he is their number one. He is a guy who can win at every level the football field is tight end, a rarity. Not quite Brock Bowers level of prospect, but a good tier behind that, and a guy who's going to be a fantastic receiving weapon in the NFL when he gets there. Yeah, and it fits what Sean Payton likes to do with Bo Nix, get the ball out quickly, get it to his playmakers, let them do the heavy lifting, and Bo Nix uses his legs when he needs to. Uh, if Luther Burden had been there, he wouldn't have picked before to Washington. That would have been a conversation that we've had to sort through. Uh, but it's a win-win, whether you have Luther Burden, the wide receiver, or Colson Loveland, the tight end, if you're Bo Nix or the Denver Broncos. All right, let's move to the Kansas City Chiefs, going for their third straight Super Bowl. They, they went out over the weekend. They agreed to a one-year deal with offensive tackle D.J. Humphreys. And Ryan has them taking an offensive tackle at number 31 in Cameron Williams. Yeah, this is a guy who's in his very first year as a starter there at Texas on the right side and looking at this offensive tackle class because you know the Chiefs are going to be desperate for it. It's not the year to get one. And unfortunately, they may have to take a swing of the bat on a guy like Williams, who's very unproven, but has tools that could be top 10 tools if he were a guy who was a three or four year starter coming out instead of a one year starter there at Texas. So if you're the Kansas State Chiefs looking at this draft class to shore up your offensive tackle problems, I'm not sure I'm going to be doing it there. I'd rather do it via trade, via free agency first, because you're going to have to get a project at the back end of the first round like someone like Cameron Williams. Yeah, that's a fair point. They're sort of in a bad way. Wanya Morris two years ago has struggled. Kingsley Sumatea, who they drafted in the second round at BLU, struggled as a rookie. So they're just they're keep shooting shots and hope they make one. And and that's it's not necessarily a, a great plan. He hasn't played as well as his teammate Calvin Banks certainly at Texas. But the upside that you talk about, Mike, that's something that some team is going to have to bet on, whether it's in the first round or, or a day two pick. All right, Ryan Wilson and Mike Renner with us on HQ Spotlight. You can dive into this whole first round mock from Ryan on the latest with the first pick podcast with Rick Spielman. Those quarterbacks going one two and. And Carson Beck even getting in there in the middle of the first round.